So the point of this tutorial is to follow up on something we were doing in class where we were talking about, we saw pictures of various plane waves. Let me sketch in an example. Here's three different planes, as you can see from the coordinate system. Three, these occur in three different z planes, z1, z equals z2, z equals z3, and so on. So we're looking at particular planes of constant z. Perhaps in this plane, everywhere in this plane, the electric field has some vectorial value. Here it's, I'm intending to sh show that it's poking somewhat out of the plane. In this plane, it's got some other value everywhere the same in the plane, but maybe a smaller value. And in this plane, maybe it's got the smallest value yet. So it's evolving in space. Now, we are well, this is going to be some electric field in general, some E field as a position of location R in three-dimensional space and time. What we were talking about in class was whether this field has curl and whether this field has divergence. So we're going to be interested in taking the curl of E and the div of E. And the question that we're asking is, are they uh, zero or non-zero? So you'll be working on that on your homework. I have some, in some sort of connecting mathematical comments to make at this point. If we were thinking about curl and div, that means we're thinking about the mathematical operations curl of E, and we're thinking about the operation div of E, so del cross E, del dot E, and this these lead to terms of the form. There are nine possible derivatives. It's every x, y, and it's in Cartesian coordinates, it's every x, y, and z derivative of every x, y, and z component. So this is what that means, what I just said, rendered sort of graphically, is that we can think of taking x, y, and z derivatives of ex, ey and ez components so we can even think of that as a grid so let me just draw in a grid now we have to ask ourselves which of these nine possible derivatives are going to exist the uh, derivatives along the diagonal here are the three that contribute to divergence and the six off diagonal ones are the ones that are appear in the expression for curl. So now let's take let's look at this particular plane wave we've got here. We can specifically say that E of R and T equals some E naught vector, a constant vector times sort of propagation term that we're pretty familiar with that turn, that makes this a plane wave heading in the positive z direction. Uh, e, e naught is given by this vector direction here and its magnitude will be whatever whatever it is when it's largest. Then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it gets multiplied by this exponential factor which at different values of z will change the value of cosine from 1 towards 0 and then towards minus 1. So E0 is a constant vector. Let me group these terms below down here in a slightly different way to say, to write it as E0 times E to the i kz, and then that multiplies by E to the minus i omega t. So what I've done here is to isolate these two terms, which are the way that the electric field depends upon position. This last term here is only a dependence upon time and will not influence which of these nine derivatives exist 
and therefore will not influence whether the field has curl or divergence. So we're concentrating our attention all in this regime right here. Now what we'll notice is that this z variable, this plane, plane wave happens to be doing us the favor of going in a very simple direction along one Cartesian coordinate, namely z. So there is there's no x or y dependence. And I'm going to write that word dependence strongly uh, so that we can distinguish it from whether there is an x or y component. But there's no x or y dependence. In any, if you hold z constant and only vary x and y, the field never changes. Everywhere in a given z plane, the field is the same. There's no x or y dependence of this field. It only changes if you change your z coordinate. So if there's no x or y dependence, that means that all d by dx derivatives and d by dy derivatives must be zero. Right? There is no variation with x or y. So I rule out all of the x derivative possibilities and all of the y derivative possibilities. These are the only three derivatives that can possibly exist, those that are with respect to z. Now I unpack e naught. Now e naught can be any vector. It could poke in this partly in the z direction. It could stay within this plane and only have y or z components. If I take this whole expression here, so let's rewrite these two terms in the most general possible way. That's going to e that that e naught. e to the i k z in general let's assume that the e naught vector has components in non-zero components in the x y and z directions so I will just write that e naught vector as having a constant e naught x times the x hat vector that's to say that the x component is in general non-zero plus a similar term for the y component plus a similar term e naught z for the z component all multiplied by e to the i kz. So now let's just consider the x, com x component of this entire field. So we're going to examine the x component of this vector. And what we'll get is that e sub x, the x component of this vector, is e naught x, a constant, times e to the i k z. And of course we would have similar expressions. This term certainly has a z derivative because of the dependence on z. And, it, and if e naught x is non-zero, then e x is non-zero. So we've got something where, in general, all three of these terms can exist. Notice that that means that, in general, this field here, it does, in general, have a divergence, because there's one term here which, is, which can be non-zero, so there's some chance that the divergence will be non-zero. And there are two off-diagonal derivatives that are non-zero, dex dz and dey dz. In general, those derivatives are going to mean that the curl of this field is also non-zero. But depending upon whether ex, ey, and ez, if some of them are some of them are zero, then some of these check marks will not exist, and there might be no divergence, or there might be no curl. And that's what the homework problem is probing your ability to examine in specific instances. So notice that although in this particular plane wave case there was no x or y dependence, here 
there's at least possible x, y, and z components of the field. It'll depend upon what case you're considering here. In the case of electromagnetic plane waves in vacuum, there cannot be uh, any divergence, so this term is going to have to go to zero. But these two in general will not. But depending upon the polarization of the electric field, there may only be EX or EY. But in either case, as long as one of these two terms exists, there will n is non-zero, then there will be at least some curl. So this the point of this tutorial is to make sure that you get the difference between X, Y, and Z dependence and X, Y, and Z components.